Glory to God Almighty, dear brothers and sisters. I welcome you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to my YouTube channel, Thy Word is Truth. Today we are going to delve into the most important topic as a Christian which we need to know. That is the importance of forgiveness. Why forgiveness is very much important to our Christians? Is, is there any reason for that? Yeah, we do have many reasons in the Bible to forgive. And let's delve into that. Now, before going to the reasons, I need I want to tell you that there are almost 75 word pictures used in the Bible only on the topic of forgiveness. And I would like to tell you a quote which says, "Only brave people can forgive others." So, having said that, let's move on to see the top 10 reasons why a Christian should forgive. The first reason is, as we, as Christians, we are the children of God. The only way which we can prove this particular uh, you know, title that we are the children of God by forgiving others. We have to portray the characters of God. One of the main character of God is forgiveness. He forgives each and every day. So if we are the children of God, we have to showcase this particular character to others. So it is a way to portray that we are the children of God. We have to take this particular chance. And uh, let's see how much God forgives us and what kind of a God it is. And he tells his character and reveals his glory to uh, his servant Moses in the Old Testament. Let's read that in Exodus chapter 34 verse 5 to 6. Exodus chapter 34 verse 5 to 6. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with them there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. God reveals his character to God almost to Moses his servant. And Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful. His character is merciful, gracious, long suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. The most important character of God Almighty is forgiving iniquity, transgression and sin and that will by no means clear the guilty. So we are we see that God has seven important characters and the most important character is he forgives iniquity and transgression. So if we are the sons of God, we need to have this particular character within us. And so this is how he you know forgives and he wants us to do the same thing. Let's read that in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. It is not a choice that uh, we can do or we can ignore this particular thing. It is a mandatory commandment to us to follow. As a children of God, we have to do this. We don't have any other option. And uh, let's read that Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Forgive one another as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Forgive one another as God forgave you. That is the command which Apostle Paul gives here. So it is very important for as a Christian to forgive one another. If you are not doing that, we are not the children of God. So that is the first point. Let's move on to the second point. Second point is that uh, if I ask you a question, what is the sixth commandment in the Ten Commandments? The immediate answer would be do not murder or do not kill. That we read in Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. So, uh, people think that this is the sixth commandment, that's it. But the fact is, that is not the sixth commandment. It's really amazing to know that 
that is not the real meaning of sixth commandment it doesn't end with do not kill or do not murder there is a continuation to that particular uh, commandment which jesus christ himself describes in the new testament let's read that matthew chapter 5 verse 21 and 22 he explains the sixth commandment the real essence of sixth commandment matthew chapter 5 verse 21 and 22 so we have to know the real meaning of that Matthew chapter 5 verse 21 and 22 ye have heard that it was said by them of old time thou shall not kill here Jesus Christ is talking about the sixth commandment and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment so here he tells the sixth commandment but I say unto you here Jesus Christ says that is not the end of the matter there, there is something more to that which we need to know that Jesus Christ, Christ explains, his, explains it very precisely here that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment whosoever is angry with his brother and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire yeah Jesus Christ talks about forgiveness we should not be angry with our brother if we are angry we are nothing but a murderer so we would be angry with our brother if we don't have the character of forgiveness if we have the character of forgiveness we don't be angry with our brother so that's what Jesus Christ is you know telling you and that we read in one more verse in 1st John chapter 3 verse 15 1st John chapter 3 verse 15 1st John chapter 3 verse 15 3 verse 15 Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer doesn't tell whosoever kills a brother is murderer it tells whosoever hated this brother is a murderer if we are forgiving our brothers we won't hate them and you know that no murderer has eternal life so it's very important to forgive and this is the second reason second reason is sixth commandment is not only about killing it's about you know forgiving others and not be angry with our brother this is again point number two let's move on to point number three point number three is when a person is offending us he's not offending us he's offending god so that's what we have to remember when we are uh, you know someone is hurting us continuously and if god is most holy if he can forgive others why can't we forgive you know our brothers so that is what we have to think and each and every sin which we commit against our neighbor against anyone on this uh, planet is not against uh, that person it is against god almighty that we read in psalm 51 4 psalm 51 4 <coughs> against thee thee only I have sinned and done this evil in thy sight says King David actually he didn't he did a sin against Uriah he took his wife Bathsheba and committed adultery but King David says against God I have committed this sin so if anyone is doing any uh, sin against us it is not against us it is against God likewise if we don't forgive others you know it is a sin and it still remains a sin God will judge for judges for that for us so we have one more example in the Old Testament where Joseph when he got tempted uh, when uh, the 41st wife 
tempted him daily to commit adultery with him he said how can i commit this sin against my god so that is how it is so it is not a sin against human beings it is a sin against god so the thing to note here is we are to we should not think that uh, if a person is uh, you know doing wrong thing against us he is not doing against us he is doing against god so if we have that mindset we will forgive that person so that is the important thing to note here this is point number 3 let's move on to point number 4 why a christian should forgive point number 4 is a person can forgive others only when his sins are forgiven and uh, to put it in a simple terms god is forgiving us each and every day if we are experiencing that and if we have that particular you know uh, idea in our mind if we are tasting that forgiveness and we are seeing how gracious our god is and uh, if we have that mindset each and every day we would forgive others if you don't have that mindset we can't forgive others first we have to think that how much god is forgiving forgiving us each and every day that we need to know no one in this world can say that i am perfect i have not committed any wrong against god each and every person is a sinner according to bible so if god can forgive us if we have that particular you know in particular thought in our mind that god forgives us sins each and every day even we can forgive others if you don't have that mind we can't forgive others that is point number 4 only a person who is forgiven can forgive others and each and every person is forgiven for his sins let's read that in a parable which our lord jesus christ explains that we read in matthew chapter 18 verse 21 to 35 as we know this a uh, parable i don't want to read the uh, old scripture but just want to tell the story here we see a person is forgiven from a king who owes him certain amount of money but he doesn't forgive uh, his neighbor or his his fellow servant who owes him very lesser amount so uh, finally uh, that king gets angry on that part of a particular person who did not forgive his fellow servant so we should not be like that and uh, and uh, we see that uh, in particular uh, luke chapter 17 was 3 and 4 disciples ask jesus christ how many times should i forgive my brother let's read that in luke chapter 17 verse 3 and 4 it's very important luke chapter 17 verse 3 and 4 take heed to yourself if thy brother trespass against thee rebuke him if he repent forgive him and if he trespass against thee seven times a day seven times in a day turn against thee saying i repent thou shall forgive him yeah our lord says even your brother for you know commits a sin against you seven times in a day you have to forgive him yeah jesus christ doesn't tell that seven is the limitation seven is a number of perfection so how many times uh, your how much ever times your brother for sins against you you have to forgive that's what jesus christ is telling you you have to forgive our brothers this is point number 4 let's move on to point number 5 why we need to forgive uh, as a christian the fifth point is when we don't forgive others we will become a bad example to our uh, other uh, you know fellow christians and uh, they will be you know unsatisfied by our behavior so jesus christ tells you are the light of this world you know looking at our character people have, have to glorify god so that is how we have to behave in this world and we have to be a great example to our uh, you know fellow brothers who are in truth 
So if we don't forgive uh, other brother who who sinned against us, it becomes a bad influence to other brothers. So that that should not be the case here. So we have to be a good example to others. That we see an example uh, in Matthew chapter eighteen verse thirty one, where we see Matthew chapter eighteen verse thirty one. Where we see this particular person who doesn't forgive his fellow, you know, servant. Other servant sees this and they get, uh, you know, angry. Looking at this, Matthew chapter eighteen verse thirty one. So when his fellow servant saw what was done, they were very sorry. They felt very sorry because this person does not forgive his servant. And came and told unto their Lord all that was done. So that should not be the case. We have to be a good example uh, to others. We should not be a bad influence to others. This is point number five. Why we need to forgive? Let's move on to point number six. Point number six is failure to forgive. If you for uh, you know fail to forgive others, God will chastise us. So if you want to get chastised. Mind of God, we should we we can remain you know unforgiving to others. You know God will uh, certainly you know chastise us. He will give certain trials in our life to know the importance of forgiveness. So before you know getting the just chastisement, we have to inculcate this habit of forgiving. Let's read that in Matthew chapter eighteen verse. You know, thirty-two and thirty-three. Then his Lord, after that, he he called him. He called the person who did not forgive his fellow servant, and said to him, "O thou wicked servant, I forgive thee." This is not like that. The king is talking to that particular servant. This is God talking to us. That is how we have to be. If we are unforgiving unfor- to others. This is how God will deal with us all the time, because thou desirest me. Shouldst thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? I had pity on you. Why did not you show that pity as to your fellow servant? That's what God is asking here. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. This is how God will treat us if we don't forgive our uh, brothers. So this is very important. God will chastise us. This is point number six. Let's move on to point number seven. Why Christians should forgive? Point number seven is if we don't forgive others, God won't forgive us. It's very plain and simple. If we want forgiveness from God, we have to forgive others. That is the condition which God gives us. It's a mandatory condition. There is no option, or there is no any other way to do that. It's very plain, simple, and uh, crisp and clear. Let's read that in Matthew chapter six, verse twelve. Matthew chapter six, verse twelve. Yeah. Our Lord teaches how to pray to His disciples. In that most important point is, and forgive us our debts, as He forgive our debtors. Here He says, forgive our sins, as He forgive others. If we are not forgiving others, how can we pray, or how can we utter this Lord's prayer? Please, we have to think that if we are not forgiving others. We can't even utter this prayer. It's meaningless. So, only if you are forgiving others, we have to, you know, say this prayer. And if uh, if we read fifteenth verse of this particular chapter, six fifteen, but if we forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. If we are not forgiving others. Even God won't forgive us. It's very plain and simple here. And uh, if you read verse fourteen of this particular chapter, if we forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will will also forgive you. It's a condition. 
if we forgive others god will forgive us very plain and simple this is point number seven let's move on to point number eight point number eight is if we are not forgiving others we can't worship god before coming to worship god almighty so as a christian we you know come into a fellowship uh, each sunday and uh, we do have many fellowship meetings and many things before coming into a fellowship or uh, before coming to worshiping god we have to forgive the sins of our brother and then only we have to come and worship god if at all we don't come forgiving others god doesn't accept us so if god want to accept us we have to forgive our brother and reconcile with him and then we have to come and worship god this is a condition let's read that in matthew chapter 5 verse 23 and 24 therefore if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee if you are coming to worship god and if you have anything against your brother leave there thy gift before the altar and go the, thy way first be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift then come and worship me says god almighty so before coming into the presence of god we are to forgive our brothers and come and worship that's the condition which god gives us this is point number eight let's let's move on to point number nine why we have to forgive others if we are not forgiving others we are taking god's authority into our heart and only god has that authority you know god is the judge of this earth we are not the judge and we are not going to judge this earth we are going to judge this earth only you know after the second coming of uh, our lord jesus christ only when he gives that kingdom kingdom into our hands and that authority into our hands before that we we are not the judges of this world and we have to showcase you know the character of god in this world and we have to become holy we have to live a life of sacrifice that is the reason god called us in this world so if we are not forgiving others we are taking that authority of god into our hand which we can't do and uh, let's read that in romans chapter 12 verse 14 and most important thing which we need to notice we are sinner that we need to note first place is we are sinner and we need mercy from god if we have that mindset we can easily forgive others if we don't have that mindset we can't forgive anyone in this world romans chapter 12 verse 14 Romans chapter 12 verse 14 Bless them which persecute you bless and curse not bless those people who persecute you bless them and you should not you know curse them that's what apostle paul tells you it's not apostle paul speaking here it is holy spirit it is the spirit of god through which apostle paul is writing is writing this with the authority of god and if you read point on you know verse 17 recompense to no man evil for evil he says don't you know recompense evil for evil provide things honest in the sight of all men and again if you read verse 18 if it possible as much as life in you live peaceably with all men we have to live peaceably with all men again if you read verse 19 dearly beloved avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto wrath for it is written vengeance is mine and i'll repay saith the lord vengeance is of god almighty so we should not take that authority of taking vengeance it is the authority of god and 
our duty is to forgive it's very simple this is point number nine let's move on to the final point why we have to forgive final thing is the injuries and the hatred and all the persecutions offenses which we get in this life you know is simply given to us by god almighty to make us perfect so we can prove uh, you know our uh, prove that we are true christian only when if we are offended only when if someone tells anything wrong about us if someone you know uh, persecutes us only when in that particular moment we can show that we are you know true christian if someone uh, irritates us irritates us every day we can show to them kindness you know the most important example which we have in new testament is apostle stephen sorry disciple stephen where you know the whole sanhedrin persecuted him and uh, they stoned him he was about to die you know but he said very important thing there which if we are in that particular uh, situation we would not have spoken it's really hard he said father forgive them they don't know what they are doing the exact words what jesus christ told in the cross so that is the character which god wants us to inculcate and uh, this particular trials and persecutions which we have in this world is making us perfect and we should not get offended by this so it's a promise to us so we have to forgive others let's read that in first peter chapter 5 verse 10 first peter chapter 5 verse 10 my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience so we have to take them as an example for suffering and patience so it's a, it's it's given to per, you know make us perfect and the next thing is uh, apostle paul says in second corinthians chapter 12 verse 10 you know he prays to remove that uh, the thorn in his flesh even though god doesn't remove that particular thing and uh, god says my grace is sufficient for you and he allows that you know thorn to be in paul's flesh till the moment he dies so we have to have this thorns in our life to make us perfect in the time of trials only we can show our uh, true character a true character will be revealed in the time of persecution so that is why god allows all this in our life he gives all these things to make us perfect so this is the point number 10 and uh, god bless this words if you people really like this video please click on like button if you want to share it please share it and if you want to subscribe to my youtube channel please click on the like button thanks a lot and uh, glory to god almighty